Oops, my bad. Welcome to Windshine Audio Channel. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Alvin, owner of uh, Windshine Audio. Uh, this is my second attempt to record this video. Um, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so to speak. I do not know video editing. I do not know much about uh, microphone and camera stuff. Uh, I do have some cameras, but uh, I never developed this as a hobby. Uh, it's more of a, a want rather than a need, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I bet you guys know what I mean. Um, video or photography has not been my thing, but audio definitely is. So uh, I'm trying to create this channel thing to uh, explain some of the stuff that uh, customer asks. Like for example, what is a DC and what it does to the DAC and what is a DAC and also what is HDMI I squares. Uh, let me take this out. Let me take this cable out. What is a HDMI? What is it I squares? Why what is it HDMI? So this channel is more of uh, to explain to you guys in a video form rather than a text message or rather than an email so that you guys can visualize um, and can hear what I talk about or can hear what I explain of what are all this about. So today I'm going to show you the Hermes DVC from Dinafrips and the Dinafrips Pontus DAC, uh, it's a Pontus 2. Dinafrips Pontus 2 DAC and one of the most popular DAC from Tina Frips. Um, what is a DVC? A digital to digital converter, DDC, or some people call it a reclocker. So what it takes, uh, it converts the digital signal and output cleaner digital signal, a lower digital, digital, digital signal, and uh, it has to work hand in hand with, a, with an external DAC. Uh, okay, before I forget. So this is gonna be a one cut video. There's no video editing, uh, like I mentioned before. I'm not a video guy, I'm not a professional uh, YouTuber. So video editing is really not my thing. But I hope you guys enjoy my video. So a digital to digital converter converts the digital signal and output a lower sheeter, a cleaner digital signal to a DAC. So it doesn't convert the digital signal to, um, to analog. So it needs to work hand in hand with a DAC like this. So it works with other manufacturer DAC as well, as long as it takes in uh, the output that is compatible with this guy. So the Hermes DVC is the premium model from Dina Frips. We have Iris, we have Hermes DDC, this one, and the Gaia DDC. So the Hermes is one of the most popular model as it is sitting in the middle. Uh, it uses some of the technology found in the Gaia DDC, like the Urban Control Crystal Oscillator. And not only does it accept USB input, it also accept AES EBU input, coaxial input, and optical input. So compared to the Iris DDC, which is an entry DDC from Dina Frips, it only accepts um, USB input and output several digital output to the external uh, DAC. But this guy, uh, output coaxial, AES EBU, two of them, and uh, RJ45 I2S and HDMI I2S. So you notice that I say I2S. Uh, it is not a typical HDMI signal that, or rather, uh, it's not multimedia HDMI signal that you use to connect for Blu-ray player or some of the uh, TV HDMI uh, connection. It is a purpose-built I2S protocol. Uh, we'll, we'll zoom into that later. You also notice there are a couple of uh, external clock input connector here over BNC. Uh, this guy, the DDC, uh, actually all of the DDC from Dina Frips can connect to external clock. For example, you can consider the Terra master clock, which generate um, 45 megahertz and 49 megahertz clock signal, and it can be connected to these two um, uh, clock input right over here. Uh, whether you need it or not, um, I will leave it to you. It really depends on how, how attentive and how revealing your system is to hear the differences. I do have customer with high-end setup that um, external clock input does make a difference for them. So I'll leave this to you. I, I usually would recommend uh, uh, how, how the equipment performed and whether this is better than the other or whether the numbers is better, better than the other manufacturer uh, because th this, this is not convincing coming from me, right? So I will leave it to the customer or I will leave it to the reviewer uh, for their professional assessment of the equipment. 
So we'll talk, talk more about um, what it does and uh, to answer some of the most frequently asked questions, especially the I2S connection. So I2S is a purpose-built um, protocol. It's not a typical multimedia HDMI that you found in those um, monitor connection or Blu-ray player connection. Um, it is I2S. So I2S has to be configured correctly for the source and the DAC to work correctly. So uh, today we'll zoom in into this. And why is it we are using HDMI cable? Because in general, HDMI cable are pretty good quality. It has um, great construction, uh, high immunity to noise. So HDMI uh, connector or cable are frequently used in um, I2S uh, configuration, not only for DNR flips, for other brands like I wouldn't mention the brand. <laughs> so for other brands, you'll see uh, I2S uh, connection using HDMI uh, because of that reason. Uh, it is just, just better than the rest of the connector available on the market now. But uh, it is definitely not the multimedia HDMI. Uh, so please do not connect the HDMI port of the DVC or the DSC to a Blu-ray player or to a monitor screen. It just doesn't work that way. So, right. Uh, I'm going to demo to you to configure the Hermes DDC and the Pontus DSC uh, using HDMI connection. And the source will be my computer. Um, it is running a rune here. Hang on a second. It, it is a rune. Uh, the rune call is installed in my Windows 10 computer. I'll be running USB cable to the Hermes DDC and the output of the Pontus DAC will be connected to the uh, Hestia preamp and the output of the preamp will be driving a pair of uh, Genelec active loudspeaker so it's pretty nice desktop setup I listen to news channel almost 99% of the, the time using this pair of loudspeaker as well as the Pontus DAC so well <laughs> okay I have two power cords here, so as I, as I plug in this power cord to this uh, Hermes DBC, you should hear a couple of relay clicking sound. So the relay clicking sound is really to detect, uh, there's a microprocessor here to detect the AC mains uh, power. So if you are in the US, it is 120. If you are in Singapore like me, it will be 240. So as you plug in the power cord to this uh, DBC, the DBC will detect the AC mains and switches a couple of relay to send the correct power to the transformer. So once you plug it in, you should be able to hear the sound. But I'm not sure whether the, the microphone on the phone is able to detect that, but uh, we'll see. Okay, two clicks. So there are two clicks that uh, the relay clicks and send the correct power to the transformer. So as you hear the relay clicks, we know that um, this guy is power up and you should be able to see a couple of LED lights light up on the, on the front panel of this Hermes DVC. So I'll connect the USB cable to the USB port. Uh, I have already installed the, the driver, the USB, the Dynafrips USB driver on the, uh, on the Windows computer. So the USB DSC will be detected right away. And I will connect this HDMI cable. It's a pretty cheap one. I think less than $10. From the Hermes DVC to the Pontus DSC over this HDMI port. Hang on a second. The case just a little bit stiff. Okay, the cable is connected. And the output of this guy already goes to the preamp. So I'm not going to flip around the Pontus DAC to show you what is at the back. It's pretty heavy. I'm sitting down, so my pair of arm is not that strong to lift this thing up altogether. So please pardon me. So um, there are a couple of buttons here. The first one is a setup button for you to configure some setting of this DDC. And the rest of the button here are, to, are really to select the input that you want to use with this DDC. The first one is the USB. Second one is an AESB input optical input and coaxial input. So as you choose the, as you click on the button, the corresponding LED lights up. It tells us that uh, which input uh, is, is currently in use for this DDC to, to, to do its jobs. So we'll be using primarily on the USB input and uh, it is already connected to the computer. And before we even uh, start up this uh, DSC to, to, to play music, 
we need to be sure the I2S setting is done correctly because we are using I2S connection. But if you are using coaxial, optical, or AES EBR output from the DVC to the external DAC, uh, you do not need to do this configuration. Uh, this guy can be connected not only to the d 5 DAC, it can be connected to the rest of the DAC that accept uh, this, uh, this interconnection, for example, optical, coaxial, or AES EBU. Right, but because we are using I2S, we have to be extra careful of the pin configuration. Both devices, I2S pinout has to be matched correctly so that the playback will be correct. You'll, hit, you'll, you'll see what I mean later. So to configure the I2S, my suggestion is to turn down the volume to minimal but audible and uh, play some familiar music in PCM first, followed by DSD, and, to, and also to make sure that the left and right channel, in phase and out of phase, tone test are, are played correctly. My suggestion for the DDC and DSC for Dina Flips is fix the setting of the DDC to mode 0, 0, 0, 0, and the DSC to mode 0, 0, 0, 0, for the correct I square pinout setting. So let's dive in. How do we con configure the uh, Hermes DDC I square pinout? Press on the setup button once. So as you press on the setup button, the LED on the setup button lights up. And you will also notice that the coaxial LED is blinking. This tells us that um, the DDC is currently in uh, configuration mode. And we, have, we can do a series of button, change, button toggle to change the setting. There's no display on these two machines, so the setting has to be done by using the button on the front and, and the indication on the front panel. So to configure the i squares, press on the coaxial button multiple times to toggle the setting. As you toggle this coaxial LED, oh sorry, as you toggle this coaxial button, 48K, 96K and 192K LED turn on and off. So this uh, turn this three LED turning on and off signify uh, 000 to 111 binary code. So there are eight settings here. So my suggestion for the Hermes DDC is really to leave the three LED to off, off, off. 48K off, 96K off, and 192K off, which is the mode zero. 000. 000, 000. 000, 000 means the three LED are off. 111 means the three LEDs are on. So once you have done this setting, Press on the setup button once again to confirm the setting. And as you exit the configuration mode, the previous selected input will light up, which is the USB input. So the setting will be stored in the memory inside this guy. And every time it starts up or every time it pops up, power up, the microprocessor or rather the FPGA will retrieve the memory from the memory chip and the setting will be uh, restored. And it will be using the same setting uh, uh, for the rest of the playback. Right, so once we configure this guy, we need to look into configuring the Pontus DSC. Um, this has to be done correctly so that the I2S uh, matches the Hermes DSC. So it was already on, so I'll just turn it off. And to turn it on, press on the standby button and choose the right, um, uh, right uh, input, which is the I2S. So how do we configure the I2S uh, pin out of the Pontus DSC? Press on the mute button. So once the mute button is engaged, uh, once the mute mode is engaged, uh, the input uh, the light will blink from the left to the right. So this is this is telling us that uh, it is currently in um, uh, mute mode, and it is also allowing us to do some configuration. So like I said, there's no screen on these two machines. So but uh, setting wise has to be done by a series of button press. And also uh, the indication will be uh, those LED on the front panel. I know this can be a, a bit confusing, uh, but as you as you practice or as you as you do more configuration with these two machines or, or the uh, one of them, you'll be more accustomed to the to the setting as I have done it many times. <laughs> okay, so mirror is engaged. How do we do how do we change the I2S uh, setting of this Pontus DAC? is by pressing the face button uh, multiple times. So it's very similar to the, pond, uh, the Hermes DVC. There are eight mode, mode 000 to 111. So as you toggle this face button, 
1x, 2x, and 4x LED light, on, light up on and off. So leave this setting to 0, 0, 0. Supposedly, mode 0, 0, 0 and mode 0, 0, 0 on the Pontus and Hermes will match the I2S pinout. But, personally, we have had experience of some of the HDMI cable doesn't work with this setting. Feedback from the customer as well, they have experienced that specific, specific HDMI cable just doesn't work for this setting. We do not know why. Unless we strip the HDMI cable to look into the, the tiny pin of the HDMI connector and also the cable construction so that we will know what happened. Uh, we use i squares over HDMI. HDMI uh, uses very fine and very fine wire and connector. We do not know why is this some of the cable just doesn't work for this setting? It could be the specific HDMI cable is purpose built for i squares with different pin configuration in the in the cable itself, or some of the manufacturer just manufacture the HDMI cable differently. So I personally have this uh, experience. Some of the cable works for this setting, and some of the cable doesn't work. So it doesn't mean that uh, 000 on the Hermes and the Pontus is the correct mode for uh, it's a unified mode for i squares configuration uh, on some very rare case some of the hdmi cable uh, will have noise so it's my advice fix one of the setting if you have if you experience noise when using zero zero mode it's the best to run through the i squares setting on the dse to to look for one of the mode that works well for PCM and DSD. So once we have configured this guy, uh, you'll notice that uh, there are a couple of LED lights up here, which is the 44K1 and 1X. It is telling us that uh, it is receiving 352.8K uh, Hz from the Hermes DVC. So it is a sampling rate display. So uh, because I've connected this to the uh, to the uh, and also my active loss speaker um, I can play some test tone uh, so that you guys can hear uh, can hear the music so the tone that I'm going to test is uh, left right channel test tone and also in face and out of face test tone um, these two tone will, will tell us that the music is played correctly for both left and right channel as well as the music is, the tone is played correctly for in face and out of face these two are the most critical tests for i squares but like like I said again, if you use uh, the rest of the connection like coaxial, optical, AES, EBU, you do not need to do go through all this complex setting. But for I2S, we need to be extra careful. We need to know what is going on, what is going on for this I2S setting and need to be sure that the DSC and the DVC or, or with all the rest of the uh, source that with I2S connection are matched correctly before we, we can really enjoy the music without problem. Right. I'm going to play this uh, test tone for left right channel test. Let me turn up the volume just a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, my, my preamp is right over here. I don't think the camera can capture this, but uh, let's play. Right. Hang on a second. It is not playing. Let me restart the room. USB is selected. Okay. Channel check. Right. So Not it is playing left channel, correct? Sorry, it was DSD. Um, I use run to upsample the PCM to DSD just now. So um, currently it is playing PCM 44K1. Left right channel is playing correctly. I'll skip it to in phase and out of phase check. In phase. In phase, the, the music will be in the center. Yeah, it plays fine. And we can fast forward to our phase check. This is our phase. Our phase is also playing correctly. So we know that the i square setting for this Hermes DDC and also the Pantas DAC for PCM playback is fine. Uh, why I say PCM is because i square spin out for PCM and DSD is different. So 
not only we need to test the tone for PCM, we also need to test it for the DSD. In some case, in some cases, uh, PCM play fine doesn't mean that DSD will play fine. So it's better to make sure that both machines are configured correctly for both PCM and DSD playback. Otherwise, uh, just in case one of your track in the playlist contain DSD, it may generate loud noise. The excessive noise may damage the loudspeaker. So this is really the last thing that we want. We just want to sit back and enjoy the music. So we do not want to damage anything. So if you want to, the last word is, if you want to use iSQS, just be careful and make sure both devices works well before you even cranking out the volume. Right, I'll off sample this to DSD using Rune and I'll play the left right channel test again. Channel check. Channel check. Left channel. Left channel play correctly. Mm. Right channel play correctly. Mm. And the next one will be the phase check. Phase check. In phase. In phase play correctly for DSD. How do we know it's DSD? The DSD LED lights up here and the DSD LED of this side will light up here as well. I'm not sure whether the camera can capture this. I think it can, but uh, it is showing DSD. So what happened if the let me stop the music. So what happened if the I squares pinout configuration is wrong? Uh, if the I squares pinout configuration is wrong, uh, most likely you will have noise in one of the channel or both channel. So it's best to turn out the volume before you do I squares configuration before you do any changes in the setting. Uh, I'm going to show you a bad example of a wrong I2S pinout configuration and you will hear the noise from the loudspeaker and I hope the noise will not damage my relatively new uh, pair of loudspeaker from Genelec Right, I'll do this anyway Channel check Channel I'm going to change the setting of this Ponted DSD So I'll change the setting of this So every noise was pretty loud and that is exactly the problem of I2S pinout mismatch right. so uh, I'm going to do it again it is pretty strong the last speaker is pretty strong and uh, it is still surviving I'm going to do this again to show you that wrong I2S pinout is dangerous so do not try this at home I know. If you want to use I2S, you need to know a little bit of I2S and be extra careful when you configure or rather when you use uh, I2S with either of this uh, DDC or DAC. <coughs> so in summary, I've covered the I2S spin-out of the Hermes DDC and the Pontus DAC. So um, I hope you guys know that uh, I2S pinout has to be configured correctly for both PCM and DSD playback and it's very important, it is very important to turn down the volume to minima the audible for the I2S setting so once the setting is done correctly the DSD and the DDC will work fine and why is it we are even using I2S? It is arguably the best digital, digital uh, interconnection between the source and the DSC on the market today. So every manufacturer has this I2S uh, connection. It is known to be better than the rest of the uh, connection that we have, uh, traditional connection that we have. And, uh, but if you want to use I2S, please be extra careful. So I hope this video helped. And I will be generating more video like this to explain the function or the feature of the, of the product. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you.